Welcome back. In this video, we are going to review some of the basics of right triangle trigonometry. And of course, one of the foundations of right triangle trigonometry is your knowledge of mnemonic, so mnemonic SOKOTOA. And SOKOTOA stands for the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is the opposite over the adjacent. And what that means is the sine of any angle or the cosine of any angle or the tangent, these trigonometry functions, these trig functions are really ratios. They're the ratios of the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. So at the beginning here, I have three different right triangles. They are all similar right triangles. They're all three, four, fives, a six, eight, 10, and a three, four, five, and a 15, 20, 25. So they're all similar. They're all the same shape, but they have, they're all different sizes. So we know that the angles of these three triangles are all the same. And that's one of the things that makes trig pretty cool is that the sine of an angle or the cosine of an angle or the tangent of an angle is always the same for that particular type of similar right triangles. Okay, so whether it's big or small, as long as it's similar, the sine, cosine, and tangent are all the same. So, there are more than just the three trig functions, though. Sine, cosine, and tangent, but there are also the reciprocal functions. The reciprocal of sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, or as we get deeper into trig, we'll see it's the y over the r, and r is going to be the hypotenuse of the right triangle. The cosecant is the reciprocal of that. It's r over y. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so katoa tells us that. And the reciprocal of cosine is the secant. It's the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent side. And tangent, toa, is opposite over adjacent. And the reciprocal of tangent is the cotangent, adjacent over the opposite. So it's a little bit, it's easy to memorize that tangent and cotangent are reciprocals. A little bit tougher with cosine and secant and sine and cosecant. You'd kind of think the cosine and cosecant would be reciprocals, but that's not the case. So a little extra memorization is going to be re required on your part. So when we're looking for the sine or the cosine or the tangent, the trig function of any angle, that's what we're doing. We're looking for the trig function or the ratio based on that angle. So it's important to know that our reference angle and the reference angle is the angle from which we view the rest of the triangle. So it's not always the same. And right now we're not going to use the right angle. So if I wanted to define, say, the sine of angle A, it is the opposite over the hypotenuse or Y over R. So if I, my reference angle here is angle A, I'm working from angle A, working from this angle. The opposite is side BC, or 8. And the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is always the hypotenuse, and that is 10. And you can see here sine of angle X, which is the corresponding to angle to angle A is also 4 over 5, or P corresponds to A, and that's 20 over 25. Those are all in the ratio of 4 over 5. This is what I was talking about earlier with the fact that they're similar triangles. So the cosine, if I want to find the cosine of angle Z, well, my reference angle changed. Now I'm working from angle Z, and cosine is the adjacent, so we want the one that's next to it. So in this case, it's 4 
over the hypotenuse is 5. Now, how did we know that the 5 wasn't the adjacent and not the 4? Well, the hypotenuse will always be the hypotenuse. So the angle opposite the right angle will always be the hypotenuse. And that will never be the adjacent angle. Uh, that will never be the opposite angle. The hypotenuse is the hypotenuse all the time. So it will be important in trig for you to know and remember your triples and your specials. So know the 3, 4, 5, the 5, 12, 13, the 7, 24, 25, the 8, 15, 17, and then your triples x, x, and x radical 2, the 45, 45, 90, or the specials, I should say, and the 30, 60, 90, which is x, x radical 3, and 2x. And again, I want to reiterate, that's the neat thing with trig, is that while the trig functions for 3, 4, 5 will all be different than 5, 12, 13, and they'll all be different from 8, 15, 17, they'll all be different from the, the specials, but within the family, the trig functions will be all the same, okay? So a 10, 24, 26, and a 5 halves, 6, um, and half of 13, 6 and a half, and 13 halves, all have the same sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, cosine, cosecant as a 5, 12, 13, or 10, 24, 26. All those trig functions are going to be the same. Okay? Same within your specials. Uh, uh, 2, 2, 2 radical 2 is going to have the same as a 10, 10, 10 radical 2. Those ratios will always be the same because these triangles are all similar. So let's do some samples. Given the following triangle, solve for the six trigonometric functions of angle A. So we are going to work up here from angle A. So if we're working from angle A, this is our opposite side. The hypotenuse is our hypotenuse. And this side will be our adjacent side. Well, our adjacent side doesn't have a quantity. We don't know how big it is. But there is a constant here. 14 is 2 times 7, and this 50 is 2 times 25, so our adjacent side must be 2 times 24, or 48. So this is a 7, 24, 25. So if I want to find the sine of angle A, and I would write it that way, sine of angle A is equal to, I could do 14 over 50, but I might as well do my reduced one. It is 7 over 25. It's the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of angle A is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So using my reduced triangle, I'll use its 24 over 25. And the tangent of angle A is the opposite over the adjacent which is angle A, I want the opposite, I'll use 7 over 24. So then my reciprocal functions are, well, they're the reciprocals. So my cosecant is hypotenuse over the opposite, or the reciprocal, it's 25 over 7. And the secant is, and of course this is of angle A, of angle A, secant of angle A, is the hypotenuse over the adjacent. So I can just flip my fraction, 25 over 24, and of course my cotangent of angle A is the adjacent over the opposite. It's 24 over 7. So I've done all six trig functions from angle A. If I were to go from angle B, it would be a different story. My reference angle would have changed. So 
Here's an example. Give the following, given the following triangle, solve for the six trigonometric functions for angle B. So now I have a new reference angle. I'm working from here. So now my opposite side, my adjacent side, and my hypotenuse. And let's take a look at this. I have eight and a half and seven and a half. Ooh, that's 17 over two. That's 15 over two. Um, this looks like an eight, 15, 17. So that's eight over two. So that is four. So I could use, for this, I could use just the sides, eight, 15, and 17, because this is part of the 8, 15, 17 family. Okay, so again, sine of angle B is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So it's 15 over 17. The cosine of angle B using Sokotoa as the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 8 over 17 and the tangent of angle B is opposite over adjacent, chief soka toa, and opposite is 15 over 17. So then my cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, 17 over 15. The secant of angle B is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, 17 over 8, and the cotangent of angle B is the adjacent over the opposite, which is 17 over 15. And finally, we want to calculate the sine of 30, cosine of 30, tangent of 30 in this 30, 60, 90. Well, if we're working, looks like 30 is our reference angle here. So this is our opposite side and our adjacent side and our hypotenuse. And in the 30, 60, 90, well, we can do x, x radical 3 and 2x. That would work. Now that's 1 times x, and that's really 1 times x. So the sine of 30 is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or x over 2x. Probably should write that out. The sine of 30 equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is x over 2x, which is 1 half. So the sine of 30 is 1 half. If I were you, I would memorize that. You will see that time and time and time and time again in your trig future. The cosine of 30 is x radical 3 over 2x. x over x simplifies to 1, so it's the square root of 3 over 2. No x is in our answer. And that is the exact number. We won't use a calculator for the cosine of 30. And finally, the tangent of 30 is the opposite over adjacent. So x over x radical 3, which is 1 over the square root of 3. You may recall we don't like the square root of 3 in the denominator, so we have to rationalize it. And we get the square root of 3 over 3. That is our final exact answer. And that wraps up our introduction to Sokotoa and the basics of trig. And we will see you in class.